Alrighty, good evening. We're going to be talking today about bonding and intermolecular forces of attraction. And uh, just as a spoiler alert, guys, they are different things. Uh, we've been studying bonding and talking about covalent and ionic bonding, and intermolecular forces are something separate from that. So, there is a big difference between intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are bonds that hold individual molecules together. These are things that occur inside the molecule. They are intramolecular, RA. And they are some things like covalent or ionic bonds. Intermolecular forces of attraction are forces, not bonds, that attract many molecules to each other. So these occur instead of inside a molecule, these occur between molecules. So you've got one molecule attracted to another molecule, uh, intermolecular forces. And again, I can't stress this enough, intermolecular forces are not bonds. They are strictly forces. So there are three types of intermolecular forces, van der Waals, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. And I know that is probably the worst name to give an intermolecular force calling it hydrogen bonding because it is a force, not a bond, but there's nothing I can do about it, so I'm sorry. So again, these are attractions that occur between molecules. They are weaker than both ionic or covalent bonds, and they are responsible for determining whether a molecule, molecular compound is a gas, a liquid, or a solid at a given temperature. Remember, I can't stress this enough, they are not bonds. They are just forces of attraction that occur between molecules. So van der Waals forces, also known as London dispersion forces, are the weakest of all the intermolecular bonds, or intermolecular forces. Uh, they occur between all molecules and all substances. So everything that you know that exists has van der Waals forces attracting the molecules to each other. What they're caused by is electrons moving more to one side of a molecule which is closest to a neighboring molecule. The neighboring molecule's electrons are then momentarily repelled away, causing a momentary attraction between the two molecules due to a temporary dipole. So just like we talked about in, um, <clears throat> in I'm trying to remember what we talked about it, we talked about it in covalent, mo in covalent bonding, how you have those polar uh, bonds where you have that dipole where one side is slightly more negative or slightly more positive. This occurs temporarily in all molecules when the electrons will actually kind of shift temporarily to one side of a molecule and then this causes the neighboring molecules electrons to also be repelled and shift to a different size creating this temporary pole which is then attracted to that neighboring molecule. Uh, the strong, the force is stronger the larger the molecule is, so the bigger the molecule, the stronger the van der Waals force. Uh, so yesterday we talked, or I guess earlier today, depending on when you watch this, uh, we talked a little bit about naming hydrocarbons, and so we have the hydrocarbon methane or ethane, and so I want you to think about the size of those molecules and think about which one is going to have the greater van der Waals forces, methane or ethane. The answer, of course, being ethane, because it has two carbons instead of the one carbon and methane. So it is a larger compound, so it will have a stronger van der Waals force. Alrighty, next let's talk about dipole-dipole forces. These occur when polar molecules are attracted to one another. So just like we had in when we were talking about covalent bonding, how we have polar bonds, we can have polar molecules. A polar molecule then has a slightly... Um, more positive side than another side, and the electrical attraction then occurs between the oppositely charged dipoles. The slightly negative region of a polar molecule is weakly therefore attracted to the slightly positive reason, region of another molecule. <clears throat> they are similar to but much, much weaker than ionic bonds. Alrighty, and last but not least is hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding can actually occur in the same molecule or between nearby molecules. So in DNA, we actually experience some hydrogen bonding within the, the molecular structure of the DNA, 
which is what causes that coiling of the DNA or the helix. But in water, we can experience hydrogen bonding between the water molecules. Hydrogen bonding can only occur if hydrogen is bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, or other halogens. And so you know how much I love to come up with dumb sayings for you guys to help you to remember stuff. I have a new saying, and that is, I have had enough of this, okay? So enough, N-O-F, meaning nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, or the other halogens. So hydrogen bonding is only going to occur when there is hydrogen attached to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, or other halogen. Water is a good example of this, uh, where an attractive force between a hydrogen covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom, like oxygen, and another electronegative element with an unshared pair of electrons. So you've got these water molecules where I have oxygen and hydrogen attached covalently. This creates a slight positive charge on the hydrogens and a slight negative charge on the oxygen. And so I will actually experience a attraction between the hydrogen of one water molecule with the oxygen of another molecule, or the hydrogen of this molecule with the oxygen of this one, or the oxygen here is attracted to this hydrogen. And so you can see how the tiny water molecules are actually attracted to each other. Now these three different forces have different strengths. The strength depends upon the type of force. So van der Waals or London dispersion, then dipole dipole, and then hydrogen bonding. And the strength goes from weakest to strongest. So the weakest intermolecular force is van der Waals, the strongest being hydrogen bonding. Now, like we said, everything has van der Waals. So I could have a substance that has van der Waals and hydrogen bonding. Or I could have a substance that has van der Waals, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Typically, though, we only discuss the strongest intermolecular force present. Uh, but sometimes I might ask which is the only force not present or which forces are present in something. So you want to really carefully read questions to identify, am I asking for all of the forces involved or just the strongest involved? In which case, the strongest would just be whichever one of the three you have that is the strongest, usually being hydrogen bonding. And so the strength of the bond affects vapor pressure, which is going to be a property that we're going to talk about later on. Uh, but vapor pressure decreases with an increase in the intermolecular force. Since with weak intermolecular force, substances can easily become gases, so they have a high vapor pressure. And boiling point. All compounds contain London dispersion forces or van der Waals forces, which get stronger the larger the compound and increases the boiling point. So we're going to be kind of talking about these two things a lot in the lab, to, um, which we're going to be working on uh, coming up where we're looking at the vapor pressure and the boiling point of these substances and looking to see what happens to um, what happens to the evaporation of these substances based on the strength of their forces. Alright, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.